Hi everyone, it's Ken here. In part 8 of this video series on making the T800 endoskeleton arm, we're going to do some sanding and polishing of the many, many parts we've made to make up the arm. So we begin with sanding of the parts, and if you recall from the earlier videos, I did what I could in choosing tool paths that would minimize the machining marks. However, that minimizes them, it doesn't completely eliminate them. So what I'm going to do now is do some sanding to eliminate them. And what I do for that, I use uh, sanding paper that's made by a company called uh, Micromash. And you can find this sandpaper uh, pretty much any, I mean, Amazon has it and so forth. But I go direct to the manufacturer, you just look up their website, because then you can buy it in large sheets and cut it down to the sizes you need for whatever you're working on. Now, they have a number of different grades. I use the MX grade, uh, and I use that both for aluminum and brass. I find that to be the best. They have a grade specifically for aluminum, and I've tried it, and the, the results have been, well, awful. So, MX is the grade I use. Now, it comes in a wide range of grits, and you want to make sure you buy the entire range, uh, because when you're using sandpaper of any kind, or any abrasive for that matter, the manufacturer has gone through a lot of trouble to figure out what progressive set of grits are right for this particular paper. So in this case, this paper runs from 80 up to 400. And 400 is, well, you can't even feel it. It's like a sheet of paper. The numbers don't matter, really, for what we're doing. What does matter is that you progress through them in order. What I found works best as a lubricant is mineral spirits. And I use the odorless one, well, for obvious reasons. So what I do is I pour it into a little bowl that I'm working with so I can keep wetting the sandpaper and uh, and not only wetting it but you're also cleaning off the grit that was left behind by what you just sanded. So let's take a look at what we're going to do here. The This is a piece that hasn't been finished yet and you know all of these have. Um, and you can see that there are tool marks on here. I mean they're not terrible but they're there. That should give you an idea of what the tooling marks look like and what I have to remove, or at least minimize. And here on this uh, inner piece, you can see, you can get a better idea there. Step one when you're using sandpaper, abrasives, um, the trick is to find the coarsest one you need to remove what you're doing without choosing one that's coarser than what you need because it's all that's going to do is make it worse. Now in my particular case I have found that the 80 is the right place to start on this particular aluminum. So what I'm going to do is just dip it in the mineral spirits and then I have this uh, block of aluminum here that I like to work on. If we start with one of the uh, inside corners here all I do is put it up against the edge with the sandpaper folded over it so I can reach both sides at the same time. You know, it's a, it's a 90 degree angle. Now when you're using sandpaper, you do not want to apply, uh, you know, muscle pressure. The sandpaper is designed to do the work, not you. All you should be doing is moving it back and forth, and letting the sandpaper do the cutting for you. That has removed a lot of the tooling marks. And keep in mind, when this is assembled, there will be a pulley in here covering this, and then ultimately there'll be another piece on top. So we're not really not going to see the insides, but I'm just, uh, I'm just doing what I can to get it good. So I'm going to wet this some more and do it a bit more. And that's actually good. The tooling marks have been removed. 
Now, there are scratches left behind because that is what sandpaper or any abrasive does. The way sandpaper works, or any abrasive works, is it scratches the material you're working on. And those scratches remove what is coarser than, than the scratches, but they do leave scratches behind. And that is why, as I've said, it's important to go through the sandpaper in the order that the manufacturer said. So we started that with 80 grit. 100 is, is the next. And as I said, don't worry about the numbers, just stay in order. What the next coarser grit is going to do is remove the scratches that the last grit left and replace them with finer scratches. That's all sandpaper or any abrasive does. Removes one set of scratches and replaces them with a finer set of scratches. Now, obviously, those scratches catch light, which is what gives that surface the, you know, the not a mirror finish. But if we keep progressing through the grids, we're putting we're replacing those scratches with smaller and smaller and smaller scratches. Eventually, we reach a point where the scratches are so small that they don't refract the light. In fact, they reflect the light, and you get that mirror look. That's all that's happening here. One set of scratches removed with a finer and finer and finer set of scratches. You also find that as you progress through the grits, it gets easier and easier because the finer grit and the fact that your part is smoother and smoother means that there's less and less friction, which is nice. Now I've decided uh, for these particular parts and the way I want them to look, I'm only going to go through uh, five papers up to uh, 180 in this case, because we do have additional polishing steps that don't involve the sandpaper. But my objective is to remove the tooling marks, and I have essentially done that now. Let's go do, let's go do this uh, outer side here. It isn't bad, but I would like to get rid of those marks that you see. So again, back to the 80 grit. Put some mineral spirits on it. And off we go. Now you might be wondering why I'm sanding them at all and why I don't, uh, you know, tumble them in some abrasive media and so forth. Well, the thing is, I have tried all sorts of, I've tried tumbling them in abrasive media, I've tried sandblasting them with, with relatively fine media, and, and yeah, you can, you can get the tooling marks now, but what's for me, for my purposes, what I'm left with doesn't allow me to go to the next steps and get that final finish. In essence, what I'm saying is the, the abrasives that I've used have always left me with a matte finish, and I'm not looking for a matte finish. In fact, uh, what I'm looking for, you, you know, you might almost call a semi-gloss. Now, obviously, if I was making, uh, you know, hundreds of Terminator arms, I would, I would find a, an easier way than sanding these parts. But, um, you know, when you're making one and it's designed to last a lifetime, and you've already got a year invested in it, a couple hours of sanding isn't going to kill you. And even now, you should be able to see that um, those tooling marks are gone. All we have are some nice, fine scratches that will get finer and finer as I move through the papers.
you notice that the pile of pieces I'm, I'm working on are the, essentially the ones that came off the mill. The ones that came off the lathe, I was able to sand those right while they were on the lathe, and there's nothing more satisfying than sanding on a lathe, because the part is turning, and all you have to do is hold the sandpaper up against it, and no, no it's, it doesn't really require any work on your part, and you get a really nice finish. All right, now this is the last one, the last sandpaper I'm going to use. That's the effect I'm looking for. Um, the scratches that I left here are very fine. And of course, I could keep going through finer and finer sandpaper and remove all the scratches, but we're not going to have to because we're going to you know, do something else as the next step. Now that the parts have all been sanded, the next thing I want to do is polish them. And to do that, I'm going to use a process called burnishing. You've probably all seen the result of burnishing. If you've ever taken apart a mechanical device where two parts are sliding against one another, you notice that where those parts were sliding, you have this highly polished finish. And that's the result of burnishing. Technically, the definition is that burnishing is the plastic deformation of a surface due to sliding contact with another object. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to do it in my vibrator. The media I use in my vibrator looks like this. These parts are all stainless steel, and they're various shapes, cylinders, spheres, and, and rods. This is called jewelry mix, and you can find it on Amazon and other places. It is what a jeweler would use after handcrafting a, a fine piece of jewelry to get all the scratches out and get it to shine, this is what they vibrate the jewelry in. Now, this is expensive, but it lasts forever. Now, before putting anything in the vibrator, it is absolutely critical that every part and the media that you're using, the jewelry mix, have to be completely cleaned. And I do that just with uh, dishwashing liquid. I thoroughly wash all the parts and the media, because if you don't do that, any dirt that's left behind on the parts is going to be evenly distributed on all of the parts, and you will never get that off. It will be embedded in the surface. So I've cleaned everything. There are too many parts here to put them all into my vibrator at once, so I'm going to do this in several passes. This is my vibrator, and what I've done is I've poured, I've already poured some of the media in, so I have a layer on the bottom. And now I'm going to start to load parts on here. Once they're all in here, Once they're all in here, I'm going to cover them now with uh, the rest of the media. And you'll notice there's uh, soapy water in here. That's uh, to help lubricate the process. In fact, I'm going to go pour some more water in. I just want to make sure that all the media is covered and all the parts are covered. When that's all done, I just put the top on, screw it on. This is mostly for sound deadening because this does make a fair amount of noise. But I'm going to stick it off in a corner on the other end of the shop and I'm just going to let it run. Um, I mean, typically, I let it run at least 12 hours, sometimes 24, sometimes even longer than that. But I'll, you know, stop it periodically to check the parts and see how they're coming out. Now I just turn it on the infinity cycle, because this does have a timer built in. But the timer is, uh, is short. It's measured in minutes, and I'm going to be running this for hours. And we'll check back when I think it's done. While we're waiting for the milled parts to be burnished in the vibrator, 
we can begin polishing the turned parts, which didn't need any burnishing. After trying many, many, many different polishing techniques, what I have found is that this Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream, not to be confused with the Blue Magic Skin Creams and all the other things that are named Blue Magic, this Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream, which is like $7 for a container like this on Amazon, and that'll last a very long time, is just actually incredible. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a piece of aluminum, just as it comes from the supplier. There's been no machining on this. This is just raw stock. I'm going to take a, uh, a cotton rag, put a little bit of the Blue Magic on it, and rub this. Now, the directions say that the Blue Magic will turn blackish um, as it's working. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. The rag certainly turns black. Okay, now I'm going to take a clean rag and wipe this off. Okay, well, now it's all black the way it was supposed to be. So what I'm going to do now <clears throat> is dip it in some soapy water. Wipe that off with a paper towel. Now that it's dry with another clean rag, I'm going to do some buffing on it. Take a look. This is one of the only products, maybe in the universe, that has the word magic in it and really does do magic. So this is what I use on all my parts, and it works beautifully on aluminum and brass. Uh, it says it works on pretty much any metal. Let's take a, an actual part. Um, you know, this is the uh, cuff, you know, which is the, you know, the base of the elbow. You've seen this before, but um, this is pretty much, you know, right after it's been machined, uh, nothing special has been done to the surface. Um, it has been washed thoroughly. So let's try the blue magic on this. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it, it is getting that uh, blackish look to it as the directions say it should. You can see what it does to the rag. All right, and now let's try to buff it off. That is pretty amazing. And although the directions don't say this, what I always do uh, when I get it to this point is I wash it off in soapy water dry it, and then with a clean cloth, just buffing it again. It's just a beautiful finish. So when the other parts come out of the tumbler, we'll do all of them too. And uh, that'll be it for the sanding and polishing step. Okay, after 18 hours in the tumbler, let's see how the parts look. Horrible. I have done everything I said I was going to do. I thoroughly cleaned the media and the tumbler and the parts themselves, and they still ended up covered with this black, I don't even know what this is. I have spent the better part of a day using every solvent, abrasive, everything I have in my shop to try to clean these parts. And I don't know. I. I I had reached a point where I thought I had ruined the project or else I was going to have to make like make the Terminator look like it was really, really worn. But then I had one absolutely crazy idea. 
if you've ever used an end mill in aluminum and have the speeds and feeds wrong, the aluminum gets jammed into the end mill and it looks like the end mill is ruined. Well, after much, much research, because I have to admit I've done this too many times, I found out that soaking the end mill in lye, which is sodium hydroxide, will actually dissolve the aluminum. If you just leave it in there a while, you'll actually see it effervesce and the aluminum just totally dissolves. It doesn't affect the carbide. And when you're all done, you have a clean carbide end mill ready to be reused again. So that's a bit aggressive on this because, well, I really don't want to dissolve this. Um, but I would like to remove the top layer. So with my heart in my throat, I took some sodium hydroxide, which again is lye, and this is incredibly caustic. And, uh, you know, it's a base as opposed to an acid if you're into the pH scale. But I took some of this and I dissolved it in water, as I, the same as I do for cleaning an end mill. And then I grabbed one of the parts and some pliers. And with my heart in my throat, began swishing it around a little bit. Now, you only want to do this for 10, 15 seconds maximum. Yes, it is dissolving this. But take a look at what just happened. The black is gone. So now what I do is I, is I dip it in some white vinegar, which is an acid. Um, a mild acid, but this tends to neutralize what the base did. And then I quickly clean it in some soapy water and dry it off to get everything off there. So here's what the part looks like. So here's a, like a before and after of what the lye did to the part. Now, as I just showed you, it was always my intent to use Blue Magic to polish the part. So let's see if that works on this part, which now has, you know, quite a matte finish. I should point out, though, that the vibrator did do exactly what it was supposed to do, which is it beautifully smoothed all the parts. It put a nice chamfer on all the sharp edges. And from that perspective, it, it did its job. So let's put the blue magic to its test now and see if it really is magic. These parts have lots of nooks and crannies that you have to get into. Sometimes I'll have to use a, a tool of some sort to push a rag into a small hole or use a Q-tip or, or whatever. Let's see what happens when we buff this. see, but the shine is already starting to come back, which is quite a relief. All right, now like before, I'm going to rinse it off in some soapy water, and now with a clean rag, I'm going to buff it some more. So, after a few minutes of polishing, here's what we started with as it came out of the tumbler. And here's how it looks after I've dipped it in lye <laughs> and uh, cleaned it up with some blue magic. Um, and I'll do a little bit more buffing on this piece. So there's still some blue magic left on it, but <laughs> the good news is I was able to salvage all these parts and don't have to go back in time and start this project all over again. I did go on the internet uh, afterwards and try to find out if anybody else had this problem. And it turns out a bunch of people have had it. 
And the strange thing is, half the people say that this is the result of the stainless steel interacting with the inside, you know, which is a rubber um, surface, the inside of the vibrator. And then just as many other people say, well, no, 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 I do this all the time with stainless steel media, and I don't have this problem. So I don't know what's going on. Obviously, I do know that there are multiple kinds of stainless steel, and maybe their media is made from a different kind of stainless steel than mine is. I, I honestly don't know. I'm going to have to do more research and experimenting because the, the vibrator does do what it's supposed to do. I mean, I, I know the camera is awful at picking this up, but these surfaces are completely smooth now, which is what the burnish was meant to do. It just shouldn't be leaving this deposit of whatever it is on here. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you're notified when the new video comes out. Because you're not going to want to miss my next one where we put the entire arm together. I'll be back.